introducing uh, Confute 2012. The the new user interface uh, is patterned after the Microsoft Dynamics line of ERP solutions, most notably uh, AX and and NAV. Uh, the AX 2012 and NAV 2013, the beta version uh, specifically. Um, as you can see, uh, the primary uh, ribbon window up on the top in the menus uh, here are roughly unchanged from uh, previous versions of Confute. However, the uh, navigation, the menu system, uh, the role center here as I'm looking at, this is the opening screen when you first log in. Uh, it is all changed, is all patterned after, again, uh, uh, Dynamics, but also Outlook. Anybody familiar with uh, using Microsoft Outlook should be able to navigate uh, their way through Confute through, uh, through the new version. Uh, what we're looking at right now is the role center uh, that is very similar to the opening screen in 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 NAV and in AX. Uh, what I'll do is I'll switch over to NAV. And you can see here is here is the NAV 2013, the beta version. As you can see, very similar uh, look and feel to it. Ribbon window across the top with tab menus uh, again across the top. Application menu uh, here and uh, uh, the Outlook bar over here on the left hand side. We have our role center here in the center console. Um, again, we can uh, navigate through existing um, items in the system by just clicking on the listing that you want to see, uh, selecting a row that you want. If you want to see the details of it, you can double click and it brings up the details of that, of that record and, and Confute will work exactly the same way. So here I'll just resize this form. So there's the details of, of, a, of a NAV uh, record. Uh, here, what you can see is these these ex expanders where you can show and hide information based on the screen real estate that you have. Uh, you see the details here in the center. You can also see details over here on the right-hand side, listings that are here. So if I switch back over to Confute, it works pretty much the same way. You can uh, open up, uh, in this case, I'll just look at some specs that are in the system, highlight a row, see a preview of the record much like you do in nav double click and it brings up the details and again just like in nav and in, in ax uh, expanders where you can expand and resize the screen show as much information as you possibly can given the the, the real estate that you have on your individual screens some if you're on a laptop, you're not only going to be able to look at one one expander. If you have a big, large screen, then you can probably look at many expanders and, and uh, information that's over here on the right-hand side. Our definition notes and attachments are consistently over on the right-hand side. Uh, and again, resizable so you can see all the information that you need. If I go back to the role center, we'll go over the uh, items that are in here. This is meant to be a, a dashboard for, for users to see common, most common information. Uh, the things that they look at and work with on, on the most regular basis. Uh, here we're looking at, and again, we're all on expanders, so we'll look at one information, uh, piece of information at a time. Here are open orders, uh, open quotes, uh, which are defined as quotes that have been created, sent to a customer, haven't expired, or, or haven't been converted to a sales order. Uh, production orders, again, uh, production orders that have been created but haven't been manufactured and shipped to a customer or picked up by the customer. Next, we have our most common spec styles. Here, what we have is, is what is called a tag cloud, uh, where, the, where the most common styles that have been configured in a plant are going to be a larger font than the other styles. But essentially, every style that the plant is manufactured is configured is showing up here. Uh, as you can see, the, the little help uh, down on the bottom it says click here to create a new uh, ECMA uh, 100.01, which is folding curtain style, or um, another most common uh, style in this particular plant is, is RSCs. There's probably a number of RSCs. Uh, so if I wanted to create uh, a style that uh, is common, I, I can go ahead and do that. Uh, if I pick an RSC, uh, we'll just go through this real quick, but uh, pick a customer, uh, give it a spec. We'll go over this in more detail here, how, how specs and so on get created. But if I just wanted to see a few quantities, I can do that. If 
I still want to see a quote come up uh, afterwards, I can do that. Here's the information about the spec itself. My board is purchased. I just give it a test. Uh, default uh, print colors, percent coverage. Again, we'll go into more details about how all that works. Um, if I want to view the uh, design or run the design wizard, uh, I can do that with a simple style like an RSC. Typically, all I need to do is just enter in some dimensions and the system will automatically configure everything else that it needs to know. It knows that since it's an RSC, it's got a manufacturer's joint, so it's glued inside. So essentially, the only information that you're going to be prompted for is what you need to define that item. Uh, at that point, with a simple style like an RSC, all you need is board grade, um, uh, flute and some dimensions and that's it. Uh, click on the auto uh, in this case and we'll go over again. We'll go over more complicated styles here later. Um, but here uh, we have a number of options of what we want our auto build to do. Typically you'll leave everything here as checked and let it to calculate what it needs to do. I'll click off the auto close button so we can take a look at what actually got completed. But what it did is it, uh, decided, it calculated the overall blank size of an RSC with those dimensions. Uh, it uh, created a manufacturing file uh, with the added trim that's required uh, based on the uh, machines that it's going to be routed over. It calculated out the sheet sizes, again, based on the layout. Um, it's going to go ahead and estimate our printing die costs. This particular plant that we're looking at is a, uh, a plant with two uh, offset presses, and a number of die cutting machines as their primary converting machines. Um, don't have a flex, so don't have any uh, any slitter slaughters or any other machines. So essentially everything is going to be die cut in this plant. But again, we'll, we'll show other plants with other configurations. Uh, it's going to estimate out our cutting die costs. It's going to uh, create a bundling and a unitizing solution, figure out the best pattern uh, based on the defaults that have been set up for this particular uh, uh, implementation. We, it's also going to create our primary routing and it's going to calculate any alternate uh, configurations, alternate routings uh, based on, again, on the rules table. Now, since this is an RSC and it can only fit on the F2, uh, uh, offset presses have been defined in this plant. One offset press is only 28 inches wide. This particular curtain is too large to fit on that, so it didn't find a different uh, uh, configuration or a different routing for it. So here I'll just click on close, and we have all of our information that got created from that spec here. Here's our manufacturing information. Here's the sheet sizes that we have. We have a number of different sheet sizes, and again, we'll go into more details about that, but the layout size is, uh, and then it's the sheet trim, and then we have our working size, which is the two of these added together, gross sheet size, which would be larger if it was multiple out and so on. So it automatically picked our board for us, knowing that it was 200 uh, tests, and I'll show how that it got created, but if I want to see the details of that particular board, I can always do that. Since this is a purchased item, you're going to have to go to the supplier to get the price. And if I just keep going around, here's the supplier and here's the prices and so on that it's coming up with um, uh, for that board. Printing information, uh, again, back on the initial tab, we said that by default, everything is four color, 100% uh, coverage. Again, this is a uh, plant that this is configured for is offset printing, and their forte is, is doing large, uh, uh, high, uh, high quality printing. Uh, and so those are the defaults. Our individual inks will be defaulted to a normal ink, could be defaulted to an expensive ink, or we can select whatever ink that we want to select when we're creating the item. Now many times when you're creating items uh, in this industry, you just want to create an item real quick, get a, a, a price to a customer as fast as you can, and then work out the details later. Uh, details of the specific inks that will be used. Uh, cutting die automatically got created, including uh, the charge estimated, which is based on the size uh, uh, and the volume of uh, point uh, of rule. Uh, and also the size of the individual die itself. Uh, the bundling and unitizing solution, again, based on plant defaults. Uh, the routing that it came up with is as follows, and this is, again, based on uh, plant defaults and different rules that have been set up for how to route uh, an item like this through their plant. So at that point, really just click Finish. We should get our our spec and our quote got created since we clicked on the little box that says show me a quote too. So here's the quote that's in front. 
If I want to look at the quote before it goes to the customer, I can do that here. Here's our quote. Again, we can see all the details. You can see again the same look and feel as, as what you're going to find in a dynamic suite of solutions. Go ahead and save my quote. Here's my product that got created. Uh, when I take a look at the details of the product, here's the first configuration that got created here. And I have my routing over here on the right hand side. Any miscellaneous materials I want to add, I can add a miscellaneous tooling operations. I can do all that. Here are my inks that got created. Um, uh, here's all the individual quantities in the uh, quanti uh, the estimate scenarios got created. We wanted a quantity of 1,000, 2,000, 3,000. These are the sales prices. This particular plant is in Philippines and these are in Philippine pesos. Uh, 61,000 Philippine pesos is roughly a dollar or 40 a box. Uh, if I want to look at the detail charges, I can always do that. And again, we're going to go into more detail about how all this is done, but here are my detail costs. And I can group those, but all this got created automatically just by hitting those few keystrokes. So if I do the same thing again with a different style, and we'll just go ahead and pick a style here from the main library and a toolbar up on the top. Here we have our entire FIFCO library that's available. So if I just pick uh, any style here, go ahead and pick this one, pick a customer, um, give it a spec. I'll go quicker this time, 1,000, 2,000, 5,000, maybe 10,000, something like that. Go ahead and take a look at the quote. The estimate options uh, are here. Uh, this particular customer we're looking for a markup of 10. Uh, these come from the plant and also come from the customer. Again, we'll go into more detail about that. If I go in and I define the rest of my spec, again, I just pick my, my board, my flute, and I give it some dimensions here. So again, I'll say 225 maybe by 125 millimeters by 200 millimeters, something like that. That's all the information that I need. Typically, you're just going to go and say auto build, calculate. It's going to close off after it's calculated it, and that's it. Click on finish, and you're going to get your spec, and you're going to get your quote. And that's what we have here. So the typical process for uh, simple items or, or items that don't have any outside processing or some of the other things that, that sometimes take place in, in box plants, it's 30 seconds, 30 to 40 seconds to create an item from beginning to end.